still need a home in Roatan, Honduras. I am currently on my second and third go rounds on building in Roatan, Honduras. I've tried to buy a house. I've really wanted to buy and not build because buying is actually a little bit cheaper from a, well, a time commitment, a sanity commitment, a uh, cost per square foot because it is, it, you don't really recoup all of your costs right away. So it's not like a, you can't just build a house and flip it in Roatan. Well, I mean, well, you can, but it's like buying high, selling low. So I do always try to buy, but they, we don't have a lot of inventory in Roatan, Honduras. So if you can find a place that you like and you can buy, I would do that all day. I'm just a little bit particular, or maybe my husband and I can't agree on things. And so when we build it, we both get what we want. So anyway, when you're building in Roatan, Honduras, I'm currently working on my second and third project right now. I first started in 2013 was when I bought my first uh, plot of land. And most recently was 2022 uh, buying uh, a, a second plot. So I've done it and I've well, we're do it's going so much better this time. So buying, buying land in Roatan, Honduras, I'd say first and foremost, when you're buying land, I, I, there's a lot of for sale by owners right now. And I'm obviously clearly biased because I am a realtor in Roatan, Honduras. I, I think one of the game changers and I, when, before I was realtor, I've worked with Steve Haas, uh, with Roatan Life. And I can't say enough good things about, about him once again, biased because that's what I do now. So, and I think the, the it could have gone a lot different for us in 2013 when we first bought land. And that's because squatters rights are more relevant and prevalent in Roatan, Honduras than maybe other places. We do have squatters rights in Colorado. They last up to 20 years, but they're not as uh, relative um, oh, like they are in Roatan. So if you are buying land, make sure you're actually buying land and that no one has a claim on that land. So make sure you do have good representation, great, like with that, whether it be a realtor and good attorneys, make sure that when you buy land there, no one has rights to that land that you are, you are purchasing. Otherwise you're kind of SOL and you just paid a lot for a piece of paper that means nothing if someone's going to claim that they that they used to live there, that they've lived on your land. So, and if you are building, it's probably less than three quarters of an acre. Um, if you're building the larger, um, larger projects, let's uh, we'll just focus on built, buying the less than three quarters of an acre, which is what you can do if you are a foreigner. Uh, you can build on three quarters of an acre or buy a lot, three quarters of an acre or less. And so, otherwise, we'll talk about the bigger land purchases in another video. So building now you own your land you legally own your land no one has rights to it so just like where you're coming from or i can only speak for the united states and canada i am a licensed realtor in the united states and um uh familiar with uh, how it works in canada as well and so it's very similar so similar here we do kind of use the same guidelines the same rules but maybe a little bit more pirate law-ish, like guidelines versus rules, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean joke, if you will. So now, you and you've got to do, so just like developing land in the United States, same, same with Roatan, you're going to need to uh, do your surveys, you're going to need to hire an architect. And when you hire an architect, um, in my opinion, I like local architects best. I like to source everything I can locally. Uh, just I've run into a lot more issues with pretenders that and I well you do have to kind of worry about pretenders but I would just vet the reputation of someone just because they have a good website or they come off really charismatic I'd make sure you do your research before you hire any person and I always suggest going to like sundowners or uh, an expat immigrant bar because people are a lot more loose-lipped after they've had a couple cocktails and they will tell you a lot more, probably more than you've ever wanted to know actually, but it's good to know who you're hiring. I try to hire local whenever I can. Uh, that local knowledge is just, it's really hard to replicate. So the, uh, the, uh, um, the, ooh, the architect that I'm working with now is Honduran. She's actually a structural engineer and really great at it. So, and I've been able to vet her same with the builders. I like to, when I'm hiring a builder, I want to see see their projects. I want to see their, and I also want to see their plans. I want to see what plans they're going off of. 
and I want to see those details and the scale. We uh, The first house we built, the scale was off. I know it's a little thing that I, well, I learned the hard way. So I like to see the builder plans, the plans that they're going off of, how they interact with their team and projects that they've actually done, not just worked on. So there's a little, a little bit of a difference there on, oh, I maintain this house versus I actually built this house. And the big things that I look for are their concrete work. That is some of the hardest things to do in Roatan and they're very, very important that like with cisterns, if I'm hiring a builder, I wanna see a cistern that they've built. And I wanna, I, and if they are pressurizing a cistern, I wanna watch that. I wanna see what they're physically doing, not what they, not what they've already done. I mean, that, that does help, but I wanna see what they're actually doing today because they can't just, it's a lot different claiming to do something versus actually seeing it. So that's whenever I hire people, I don't ever hire people based off their word. I want to see what they're actually doing and I want them to take me to their sites. And I'm also going to ask the local community around what they think of this individual. So it's a little bit more uh, personalized with that. And so with the building, uh, my biggest piece of advice, the first time we, we didn't, our, we didn't have the supply chain as kind of locked down as we do this time. And one of the reasons why I'm working with the builder that I am is because he's got that supply chain locked down. And so most of our materials are coming from somewhere in Central America. And so I try to stay local whenever I can. Importing stuff from the United States, I mean, that can be cool. It's really expensive and it's a headache. Um, the only thing I'm considering importing is maybe some Indonesian beautiful glass tiles for my bathrooms or a pool, but I'm still debating on actually discussing that with my husband right now because he doesn't want to pay for that feature. And I really like glass tiles and Indonesia has some absolutely beautiful, beautiful materials. Anyway, I digress. I try, I do try to uh, source everything local or within Central America and keeping that supply chain nice and tight. And I try not to depend on the United States um, just four things, which also helps reduce the costs um, a good bit. So just the biggest things I've learned is make sure you have a great, a great team. And then I've also, you have to be present and it's very difficult to build if you are not present on the island. For me right now, I'm doing two build projects, which I don't know if that's intelligent. I'm rebuilding a house in Colorado that did burn down in the Marshall Fire. And I'm also building the new house in uh, Roatan, Honduras. So I am, I'm hiring an extra supervisor to kind of be there and be my eyes and ears when I'm not there. And I think more eyes are better on projects like this. I would just say, make sure everyone is respectful of the other one. Uh, just, it just helps make everybody's life easier. And I think having those kind of safeguards, creating your own safeguards is going to make your build go so much better because there are not safeguards to protect you or to, uh, you know, there are, there are building codes and they technically have to follow them, but they're going to, it's going to be a lot different and a lot more is dependent on you and you seeing what's going on and having that reputable builder and a builder that knows what you want because building standards in the United States and Honduras are not one and the same or wherever you're coming from. It's a different different place of so different standards, different expectations. So, and I like to put in those fail safe. So I do hire, I have a project manager and then I also have another kind of inspector that works for me, not just the municipal inspectors that kind of, they, they work for the municipal. I want them to be on my payroll. Um, so they are looking out. So I know that they are looking out for my best interest. So those are my best pieces of advice is be active, be as educated as you can, get as many eyes on the project as you can with different specialties. There's a lot of people all over the island. If you want a flat roof, well, I can tell you all about that. And I'd make sure you, you hire someone that knows how to build a flat roof because that's not necessarily the standard Honduran pitched um, beautiful vaulted ceilings that we see in so many homes.